Hello and welcome to the video. This is a very quick video for a patron of mine, a gentleman called Jeremy. Now Jeremy has his iNav wing set up and it is uh, rolling okay so he can turn, he can climb okay, but he's having trouble getting the nose down to bring it down. Now this is probably because the control surfaces haven't got enough movement in the direction that he needs. iNav will never be able to fly a poorly set up plane very well, so it's important that you have some of the geometry of the control surfaces set up how you need it. Now I have manual configured as one of the modes. If we just jump on the computer, go into the modes tab, we can see here that manual has been selected. It's one of my flight modes and it's the one I'm currently in. It's selected as blue. If we now go back on the desk, then as I move the control, you can see that both the control surfaces have about the same throw in both directions. And that is really important. Now let's jump into iNav and I'll show you how you can make sure that that is the case. I would recommend if this is the first iNav video of mine you've ever seen, don't start here. Go and watch the iNav for Beginners 2020 series. I'll put a link down below and there's also an iNav 3.0 fixed wing setup series. Go and check that out too. But here in the iNav interface, we have a couple of things. First of all is we'll come back to these midpoints in a minute. But then we have these rates. At the moment we have a 100% rate. We can actually increase or decrease that a little bit. That will change the amount that the control surfaces are moving. We shouldn't use rates on the radio with things like iNav uh, because you need access to things like your on-screen display menu and stuff. If you want to change, if the control surfaces are moving too much, come into here and reduce it. So if it's moving too much, reduce it to about 80. How do you know if it's too much? Well, it should be in the manual. It should tell you what the throw should be for the control surfaces. If not, you'll be able to find out from other pilots in the forums what other people are using successfully. On this particular Atom RC Dolphin, I've got about 12 millimeters in each direction, which is reasonably aggressive, but works well for me. Now, the other thing that we need to do is also make sure that when the controls are in the middle position, they're kind of in line with the wing, and both of mine are. And to do that, what I've had to do is change the midpoint position. You enable live mode, and then you can actually change the servo number here uh, to get it so that it's in line. Now, after you've trimmed your plane and you've gone through the INAV Maiden, they might move slightly, but that's a good place to start. However, you need to make sure that the rest of it looks good too. You don't want these numbers too far away from 1500. By default, when you first start off, both of these numbers will be set at 1500, and you need to make sure that the linkages look something like this on the servo, i.e. they're kind of straight up sticking out of the wing. If they are, then that's probably gonna give you enough throw uh, in both directions, equal throw in both directions. If in iNav if you come in here and this is set at 1500 and your servo doesn't look like this, then remove it and then reattach it so it does. It might not get exactly there and that's okay if it doesn't get exactly because what you do is you just use these numbers in the configurator just to fine tune it. And once you've got that set up, then you physically adjust the rod that goes from the servo to the control surface to get it in its middle position. Once you've done that, then you should find that you have equal throws in both direction, and that's what you're really looking for, for with all the control surfaces on the model. Now, once you have everything set up mechanically well, then you're in a fantastic place. The plane is gonna fly a lot better, you're also gonna get much better responsiveness, and the tune is probably gonna work better as well. However, this is really handy if you're flying in manual mode, which is why we've kind of been looking at that on the bench. If you use manual mode, the model will not attenuate the movement of the controls. If you're in one of the stabilized modes, then you can't see the full movement. So don't do what I've just showed you on the bench in anything but manual mode. Now, there is one other thing that's worthwhile checking out. If you go into PID tuning, if you then go into rates and expo there's this maximum roll angle and maximum pitch angle in the old days these were set to 30 degrees i don't think that's enough i think 60 degrees is better now what this means that this is the maximum amount of pitch that you're going to get and the maximum amount of roll if you're flying in something like angle mode 
So if you are flying in angle mode because you like um, the safety of that, uh, but you find that it's very sluggish, then you will only be able to roll the aircraft or pitch the aircraft a maximum of whatever's in here. I always set it for 60 degrees on my models. Uh, you might find that it's less. If it's less, I put it up to 60 degrees and try that out. It's usually the roll angle when you're turning that you find uh, needs a little bit of increasing, but that's the other place that I come and have a look if you're finding that it feels like the model is reacting very sluggishly and you don't have enough authority. So Jeremy, hopefully that helps you. I think what you're finding is when you do um, pushing down on the pitch control to push the nose down, you haven't got a lot of this movement and that is probably because the linkage isn't properly set up for these particular control surfaces or you've got something wacky set up here in iNav. If you have any other questions with iNav, then check out those other two series and pop them down below in the comments and I'll do what I can to make a quick video like this to cover how to check it and how to fix it. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.